Hello and welcome to Game Dog Saga. Today we will be talking about the saga of Pit Island and Sammy the Arab's Boomerang. Back in the late 90s, my partner and good friend Sammy the Arab called me and asked me if I would take his most prized possessions, Boomer, Crazy Lakes, and Millie, up to my yard and use them in my breeding program. These dogs were littermates that, had, that he had kept out of a breeding he did with Nagy's Christine to Smith's Red. I knew from some of the early breedings that Sammy did with these dogs that they had the ability to produce good solid bulldogs, so I jumped at the chance to start breeding these red boy dogs. At that time, Sammy and I already had acquired several great dogs from the yard of David Tant, so I knew breeding Boomer and his littermates to the blood I had already acquired would make explosive results and complete the package. When I got the dogs to the yard, I received a phone call from my partner Sammy, and he told me to be very careful breeding Boomer, because he would tie to a bitch with no problem, but when he was ready to pull out, he would go crazy. I said, now you tell me this. I asked him if he had the ability to bite under normal conditions, and he said no. Sammy thought it was the funniest thing, but I knew I could handle it. Being that I do not feed, keep, or breed man biters, and the fact that I had three daughters, I had to test Boomer myself. I constantly tested this dog for weeks straight by feeding him steak, liver, chicken, you name it, while putting my hands in his bowl and roughing him up. And true to Sammy's word, all Boomer would do would swag his tail and lick me. I knew at that time this dog wasn't a man biter. He was just a crazy ass red boy dog that had a thing would when he is done breeding, he is done. Taking no chances, the first time I bred him, I muzzled him and stretched the bitch and chain out tight. Sure as shit, after about a 30 minute tie, Boomer started flailing around like a fish out of water, growling and going nuts, trying to get his dick out of the bitch. Once he came loose, he was fine, but I remember thinking, man, that is the strangest thing I've ever seen. I started to program with these dogs as soon as I could, breeding both Boomer and his crazy, and his brother Crazy Legs to our best, best brood bitches. Mostly these bitches were bred down from my own stock, of Hardcore's Champion Mystic, as well as the stock we purchased from Tant. Crazy Lakes was a small, odd-looking dog, with bad legs, which is how he got the name. He was so damn fight crazy that the only two breedings I did with him I had to do via artificial insemination. One was to a direct daughter of Schoolboy's Big Red, and the other to my Pepsi bitch. Out of these breedings came two champions. Crazy Lakes died of cancer soon after, so I concentrated solely on Boomer and Millie. From the early breedings I did with Boomer, I could see these dogs were something special. As pups, they were on fire and showed the typical crazy attitudes red boy dogs were known for. But as they matured and we started looking at them closely, we could see they also had extreme determination, ability, and very hard bites. These dogs were working dogs and boy did they love to work. I decided I needed to continue this program by inbreeding Boomer back to his sister Millie. I wanted to see how these inbred dogs would turn out. Out of these breedings, I took only the very best females and bred them back to Boomer. The females that I considered average I only used as outcrosses, and they turned out to be great producers in their own right. I stayed on this course for several years, and through hard culling, breeding, only his best daughters back to him, I eventually started to get red boy dogs like no other we have ever seen. This line of red boy dogs excelled in almost every facet as compared to other lines, and I was very pleased with the results we were getting out of these breedings. Inbred or outcrossed, this family was producing dogs of the highest caliber. The early breedings that we did with Boomer bred back to his sister Millie produced really solid bulldogs. So much so, that I decided to wait to get the one special male from those breedings that I could use for breeding as well. That dog turned out to be Boomer Jr. Out of all the males we had from those breedings, this dog topped them all in every aspect. After he made the cut and I started to implement him in my breeding program, I could see that he too had the ability to produce high caliber dogs. It did not take long for people to notice the quality of this blood. Before long, they were in demand all over the country and eventually the demand for them extended overseas as well. As with any line of dogs, you get some good and some bad, but the good far outweighed the bad. People could not deny that these boomer dogs were way above the average as far as red boy dogs go, and before long they were being referred to as boomer dogs. This I knew was a great honor. When the mantle gets passed down from one famous dog in a gene pool to another dog, it speaks volumes on that dog's producing abilities. Boomer made Rom when he was just six years old and produced a total of seven show champions. 
that we know of, and too many show winners to even keep track of. The old man, as I called him, had the best chain spot right by the house, and he was always treated like a king. He was the one that got the table scraps and the most attention from our family. All my kids loved Boomer to death and were always playing with him. In the fall of 2010, Sammy the Arab came to the yard for a long overdue visit. My friend Ray took pictures and we were happy as we did it. At the time, Boomer was 10 and he was looking it. Sammy and I decided it would not be good for the old man to spend another winter in my yard, so we took him back to Brooklyn shortly thereafter. He lived a good life for the next two years with the man that bred him, eating the best of everything and sleeping on the couch. New Year's Day, 2012, Boomer passed away sleeping next to the radiator in Sammy's bedroom. It was a proud honor for Sammy and I to own such a great stud dog. He was a true living legend, and we were truly blessed to have had uh, the opportunity to live with this great animal. I am confident that he will go down as one of the greatest stud dogs who have ever lived. He will always be missed. Rest in peace, old man, and thanks for all the memories.